And here we are again, Hornets. This time we are going to move on to doing the question of part three. So we're going to be looking again at page 211. We've already read the historical account on Lewis and Clark's expedition on page 210. We have already read the story. We've already botched our title. We've already circled our paragraphs. We've already done all of our stuff. So now we want to look at the question. So I'm going to scroll down and we're actually going to look at the question. And my question actually asks, which facts, which fact presented in Journey to the Pacific, which is ours, uh, is also included in the fictional story above. So it's asking me which fact in the real nonfiction story is presented in our actual fiction story. So think about what we put about our fiction story, okay? Anything that had the elements of fiction, which is made up, means that it's not factual, which means, so let's say we circled as our fake characters that we added to our actual um, chart. We added Peter. We also added the one man. Okay, we also added the dialogue. So any of their dialogue, anything that they were saying to each other, other is going to be completely, you know, fabricated as far as we know. So in any of their emotions, any of their emotions, all of that deals with something that is fiction and we're looking for something that is fact about to run out of room we're looking for something that is fact okay so a says peter so take a second and see if you can figure out which of these four answer choices is the factual piece of evidence in or the something factual that's in our story versus the things that are fictional elements that go along with our plot triangle too, with our plot diagram. Okay, hopefully by now you've taken the time to look things over. A says that Peter played a key role as a member of Lewis and Clark's team. Well, Peter is a character. That is a made up person. So he cannot, A cannot be the answer. That was not in our chart that showed us what really happened along this journey, this expedition. B says some of the explorers felt that the ocean was a sight for sore eyes. As much as I love this idiom, which goes back to what we talked about earlier, this figure of speech, that it, that it literally, it doesn't actually mean their eyes hurt. Remember, sight for sore eyes just means that it was something that they that they wanted to see really badly. And it's something that they were looking forward to seeing or something they're happy about seeing. But um, it's an idiom. And I'm not really sure that this particular piece of dialogue would have been said or not. So, and it's dialogue. And a lot of times dialogue, eh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to cut that out and say, because it's dialogue, it's not going to be part of the original story and when I or the original account. And even when I go back and look at the account, I'm not seeing a whole lot of emotional things that are put in from the explorers of the, the Corps of Destiny, of the Corps of Discoveries. C says Peter tried to keep his spirits up during the expedition. Oh, well, there we go again. Again, we got Peter plus we got emotions. And both of those things were cutting out because that was not in our original historical account. And D says the explorers had mistaken an estuary for the Pacific Ocean. Well, that happened. We underlined that earlier in our text because it was in both account. One was in the historical account and one is in this one. So, yes, D is your answer. Okay. Now, we're going to scroll down here, and we're going to look at our show you're thinking, and it wants you to describe how the author of Citing the Pacific used, it, used and altered historical details about the Lewis and Clark expedition 
to tell a story. So how did the author, so who is our author? And our author is J.C. Wright. So how did Wright use these facts and things that we learned in the account to use and alter details? So I'm going to let you go ahead and try to write that in and see if you can come up with your answer. All right. Hopefully you have come up with a really good one. Um, so for me, when I look at this, I think about the fact that we got those, we got that dialogue and we got those emotions. So we were able to make inferences and draw conclusions based on how we would feel if we were in their situation. So take, for example, um, in our text where it says the men exchanged doubtful glances. Okay. That right there is something that I went, I might use to alter or to use my story because if I go back and look here, it does say in our second paragraph that they thought they had finally found the ocean, but they were mistaken. And since they'd been out looking for over a year, I'm pretty sure they would have been disappointed to find out that they weren't at the ocean and they were going to have to keep traveling. They might even have that feeling that the next body of water might not be the ocean. So that is a really good story device element to come up with to think that they actually might have exchanged those doubtful glances. Like they didn't believe that they actually found the body of water that they were looking for, the Pacific Ocean. So that would be a good one. And no, I'm not going to write it in for you because you will just copy my answer. I'm hoping you came up with your own answer and even me talking through my thought process will help you write down your answer on how they use details from the historic account and might have altered that in order to create a more engaging and entertaining story. All right. So with that, we are done with part three and, um, we will start part four tomorrow. So if you have, like always y'all, if you have any questions, please shoot me an email or a comment on your Google classroom. Other than that, bye y'all.